Hi, Dr. Scott Jensen here. Something very important happened yesterday. Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Meta, or Facebook, wrote a letter to Jim Jordan, who is the chairman of the Committee on the Judiciary in Congress, dated August 26, 2024. Here's what Mark Zuckerberg said in his letter. We're, referring to Facebook, we're about promoting speech. In 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content. He goes on to say, I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. I also think we made some choices that, with the benefit of hindsight and new information, we wouldn't make today. I feel strongly that we should not compromise our content standards due to pressure from any administration in either direction, and we're ready to push back if something like this happens again. He goes on to say later on that I want to address the contributions I made during the last presidential cycle. My goal is to be neutral and not play a role one way or another, or to even appear to be playing a role. So I don't plan on making a similar contribution this cycle. Mark Zuckerberg, founder, chairman, and CEO of Meta Platforms, also known as Facebook. What we're hearing right here in this letter to Jim Jordan is what many millions of Americans suspected, but many millions of Americans denied was happening. If someone dared to suspect that this kind of secret cooperation, this kind of collusion, this kind of conspiring, this kind of plotting, if you dared to think that, you were considered a conspiracist. You were considered a wing nut, a whack job, whatever. And we now have Mark Zuckerberg coming out and telling Jim Jordan, the congressman, yeah, it happened. The Biden White House, they pressured us, they pushed us, and we knuckled, and we shouldn't do, and we won't do it again. There's a formula here, and I think it's important for every one of us to recognize it. The way we lose our freedoms is when a government decides to shut down dissent. When dissent is squashed, the first step has been taken. The next step is once you've squashed the dissent, then censor. Censor by way of mainstream media, social media platforms, you need to censor them. Because once you've gotten rid of the dissenters and you've censored a whole lot more folks, now you're in a position where you can put forth bans. And we saw government banning this, that, and the other thing. Banning travel, banning this, banning that, banning church. Locking down schools, locking down businesses. Then the government is in a position to ban, and once the bans have occurred and there's been some quiet acceptance of it, that's where you get really dangerous because the next step is the government is now ready to accuse anybody they choose, and they did. Our government, the United States of America, our government accused without basis and got away with it because the first three steps of stopping the dissent, censoring the people, putting the bans in place. And I think you can make the same case that this exact same formula was followed in other countries, perhaps even the country to our north. Bottom line is, when Mark Zuckerberg decided to come out and get real and say, hey, my bad, this was huge. Let's look at what some of the mainstream media are saying around the country today. Wall Street Journal, headline, Mark Zuckerberg says White House was wrong to pressure Facebook on COVID. In the content of the article by Siobhan Hughes, it says Biden administration to have pressured Facebook to censor content. In Time Magazine, Zuckerberg says Biden officials pressured Meta to censor. The BBC, Zuckerberg regrets bowing to Biden. Pressure from the Biden administration to censor content. Another article, BBC, David Malloy. But this one, 
This one was two years ago. Zuckerberg tells Rogan, Joe Rogan, FBI warning prompted Biden laptop story censorship. And in that article, it says, Mark Zuckerberg says Facebook restricting a story about Joe Biden's son during the 2020 election was based on FBI misinformation warnings. Zuckerberg said that getting the decision wrong sucks. And he went on to say, when we take down something that we're not supposed to, that's the worst. Well, folks, let me share some news with you. Facebook took down a fair amount of what we put up while we were running for governor. We typically could put out a video of some type, and tens and tens of thousands of people would watch it, and hundreds if not thousands would share it. But we got throttled. We got throttled to the point where we reached out to Facebook. And Facebook representatives told us, oh, no, no, we're not throttling. Everything's all clear. The algorithm hasn't been changed at all. B.S. Zuckerberg is now confessing that they did this. They did it routinely. They knuckled to the White House. They got involved in political collusion. In an article in CNN... Today, Zuckerberg said his goal is to be neutral, so we'll not be making a similar contribution this cycle regarding in 2020 when he made donor dollars. But here's where it gets really ugly. CNN reports in June of this year, the United States Supreme Court ruled 6 to 3 that the plaintiffs in a case accusing the federal government of censoring conservative voices on social media, had no standing. The Supreme Court ruled that the plaintiffs who accused the federal government of censorship did not have standing. So you see, this formula, stop the dissenters, censor the people, put the bans in place, because once you've done that, now you can go ahead and start accusing willy-nilly left and right. Honestly, the real conspiracists over the last four years were not the everyday people of America or the everyday people of any other country. The real conspiracists have been those people deeply embedded within positions of power in our government, sometimes hidden, sometimes exposed, sometimes elected, sometimes appointed. But the bottom line is, we have seen in the last 24 hours that government indeed colluded with social media platforms, and specifically this one, Facebook, Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, and he acknowledges it. And he acknowledges that he made mistakes. And I'll give him credit. Thanks for at least saying it, Mark. But by George, folks, American citizens were treated like pawns. We exhibited lemming-like behavior, massing together and not believing this was possible. Honestly, American citizens, we became impotent. I cannot help but think of the prose written by Martin Niemöller in 1946. He was a Lutheran pastor in Germany. And he was acknowledging his own role in not coming forward and not pushing back, not standing strong. He was criticizing the German intellectuals, the clergy, himself, and saying something like, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. And I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak for me. Folks, for three years, I was routinely throttled by social media platforms. 
I was kicked off of TikTok because I complained about a news story that was done that was extremely biased and inaccurate. And that night, my TikTok platform and 300,000 followers were gone in an instant. I don't think we have to expect a confession from every one of the social media platforms. Mark Zuckerberg has opened that door wide open. It's unfortunate that our Supreme Court said that this case that could have gone to the Supreme Court and opened the doors and protected American citizen rights, free freedom of speech, this could have happened. But the Supreme Court said they don't have standing. I don't care what the Supreme Court says, I'll tell you. If you're willing to get in the arena, in my book, you've got standing. And Mark Zuckerberg just told you and me and billions of people around the globe that he made a mistake. Facebook made a mistake. They knuckled. They knuckled to a government that was willing to use any measure to get their way. Our government, in combination with big tech, they're the ones who created most of the conspiracies. Get in the arena. Thanks.